Now then guys, Matty here from M&J Automotive, and today we've got a little 2008 Citroen C1 up, uh, and it had a fault on the dash for um, catalyst aging, so we're going to be replacing the catalytic converter. Uh, so we're going to do a bit of, bit of a walkthrough video on how to actually replace it. I'll move up here uh, so you can see where we're looking. So as you can see, there is the catalytic converter, uh, Toyota part number on top because this is essentially a Toyota underneath but yeah so we're going to be replacing the catalyst catalytic converter not the easiest thing to say uh, but that also entails you can see there's a nice big gap there to the side of the radiator fan which I've learnt from doing four or five of these in the past that uh, if you take the front bumper off <coughs> you can get straight to it nice and easy so we're going to be doing that uh, and showing you the process of how we do it and so yeah, we'll just catch you guys in the next bit and uh, keep, take you along for the ride. Right guys, so first off, we're starting off by taking off the upper bumper bolts. Uh, one, so we've got three 10mm bolts there and a trim clip. There, I hope you can see all that. So I like to just crack them by hand first, just to make sure they're actually going to go before going at them with a impact. Like so, so yeah, put that down. Grab our 3 8 drive. 3 8 fuel. Make sure I can actually get the socket off. Like so. And then, I always like to have an organizer nearby so that any bolts that I remove. I can section them off. So, so from where, like as I go, so start at the beginning, work your way through, and then when you get towards the end, um, you just and you've finished the job. You well, you that's it, not finished the job, but you've replaced the part you need, you wanting to replace. You just work your way back. So yeah, that's the uh, those sec those bits done. So that's. The top section of bumper loosened. So I'll cut out, cut back in when we've got to the next stage when you're in a nice position so you can actually see where we're going and everything like that. So I'll catch you soon. Okay, guys, so the next step we have is underneath this bumper corner, there are three. 10 mil bolts. I hope you can all hear me because I'm. We're just trying out our new um, external microphones to see how they work, how good they are, see where we're going in the future with them. And we're also trying our little shutter switch to see if it operates the camera as it needs to, so we don't need to be constantly behind the camera before we start we can start in, we can start out the video in front of the camera and go that way with things so yeah three 10 mil bolts what I'll try and do is when I'm doing this side I'll show you from this angle so you can see the arch line a bit and then when we move up to the other side I'll try and show you underneath so you can see the underside so then you've got both fields of view and then there is a trim clip in there which requires a little Phillips head screw but with no pressure whatsoever just you just need to rotate it so it rotates the thread out because if you put any pressure on it it'll just push it straight back in so that is almost loose like so so yeah that's the bumper corner quite close to loose so what I'll do is I'll cut out cut back in shortly uh, to work out which stage we're going to next this is basically it's been a while since I've done one so I'm just working my way through and showing you guys as I'm going so yeah, I'll cut out now and cut back in in a minute so as you can see the number of plates dropped I'm not going to show you the actual number plate itself to avoid showing you the customer's registration but the screw that was at this end was actually screwed into the crash bar so I've just had to loosen that out so then the bumper as you can see is a lot looser so yeah, we'll 
move over to the next section so I can show you underneath the corner and then I'll try and show you how to remove the clips in the bumper edge to avoid breaking the uh, corner plastic. Right, so now we're going to be removing the lower screws. Throughout. And then there you go, like so. So that should be exactly the underside of the bumper released. So now I'll cut out, cut back in in a minute so you can see the trim clip, and then the upper side of the sections of the bumper. So now the little trim clip that's under here. If this screwdriver is going to catch it, which I don't think it is, so I'm going to have to go get the small one. Where do I put it? Tiny little screwdriver. And I don't think this is even catch it, going to catch it. No, I'll go get a little flat blade. No, this isn't catching either. Right. I'll cut back in shortly when I've uh, got that little trim clip out. Right, so I'm back. And the centre's out of the little trim clip. So now the trim clip is out. Pop that there. And as you can see, that, uh, if I knock, there we go. So, right, I'll try and move you guys in a bit closer so you can see what's actually going on and what we're doing. So, pull that out there. You can see under there, there is a little plastic clip. So I'll just get that propped like that. And then just work your way through to get them all out. The top one's a bit of a pain in the ass, so I'll cut back in once that's out, and then I'll show you removing the bumper. And now the bumper should just come off. Like so. So I'll put this on there. And that reveals one catalytic converter. So yeah, once we're at the point where we start removing this, I'll crop back in to show you guys the process. So yeah, catch you in the next bit. Right, so first step, you want to be cracking off the lambda sensor. Then unplugging Head sensor. When you can't really get to it, it's easier said than done. Yeah, unplugged. And there's a 10mm bolt just above, which I will get cracked off. I can find my ratchet, found it. Yeah, this is the only problem when you've got Josh here to have my tools all the time. Alright, I'll go grab a flexi extension so I can get into it properly. Alright, I'm back with the extension. As you can see, the 10mm bolt is there, holding that on, wire and plug there, and the lambda sensor itself is 22mm. So a 22mm spanner, usually cracks that off. So, 
just wind that bolt up. Ten mil bolt out. Right there. Into our organizer. And then best thing to do probably stick the wire straight up and just rotate it. The lambda sensor out like so. So there we have the lambda sensor which we will need to keep because you um when you buy the new cart unless you buy the sensor you don't get that included. So next step I'll uh, look at the next section see which ones we'll go which what, what we're going to attack and then cut back in one with there. Right so the next step is going to be about there, about there. Underneath there is one nut under there and one nut under there and there is also a mounting nut mounting bolt there and one point is with it being Toyota built originally what you think would be 13s are not they are 12s and with them with it being a bit of an older car everything's built up a bit of corrosion over the time so I would recommend tapping the socket on first just to break that seat of corrosion off so then you can crack them all properly so we have our 12 mil socket a couple of extensions to extend out past the crash bar and a long three quarter inch Seagly ratchet. So there's one cracked. Two cracked. And I can see the inside. Three cracked. Yeah, your best bet is crack everything before you actually start winding everything out. Yeah. Need to retrieve that. The socket has decided it wanted to stay behind. Very noble of you to open the socket, but we do need you. That one cracked. And then we'll go for the mounting the bracket bolt at the bottom oh sorry guys not you so that is that one cracked so that is the first one i'm going to remove and it nicely just lines out and we dropped it right there so that is one bolt and then i'm just gonna the speed so Wind them out with the uh, little Milwaukee 3 8 impact. So the two bolts. And then the nuts will be a bit different because of the. Oh, it's pulled the. Uh, it's pulled the stud, which isn't a problem. And then this one. And this one hasn't, that one's just taken the nut. Which, if anything, is probably going to benefit us because then at least we've got a stud to guide us into the right position as we're refitting. So, what I'll do now is I'll cut out and cut back in when we're going for these down here, which currently you can't see very well because you're above it. So I'll find us a better position to sit in so you can see them. Alright, I'll catch you in the next bit. So we're into the next bit. As you can see, one socket on there. And these, again, with it being Toyota built, are 14 millimeter. So again, not the average your average uh, size sockets or anything like that. So what we'll do is we'll get the match it on and that's that one cracked
Oh, that's tight. Oh, very tight. Right. What I'll do, I'll cut out, then cut back in when we're at a position with that one out. But yeah, you get the drift of what we're actually tackling so you know where to be going with everything. So yeah, once I'll get them two bolts out off camera uh, and then we'll be, I'll show you us removing the cat, unboxing the new one, fitting the new one on. So I'll catch you in the next one. Do not try this at home. So yeah, that's them two out. And as you can see, they've got springs to pull the clamp up and everything like that. So they're out, out of the way. And now, one cat out. So I'll show you, well, I'll remove the gasket because we don't need that anymore, because we've got a new one of them. Gonna clean up this surface a bit so that when we put the new gasket on, it's uh, sealed properly. And yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next bit. So, brand new box with a brand new cat in it. So, there we go. Brand new catalytic converter. So, we just need to transfer the heat shields over. New gasket. And new hardware as well. So, in here we have new exhaust, heat shield, screw nuts, new springs with bolts for the lower, for the bottom, new exhaust studs should we require them, a new kern gasket for the bottom, so yeah we've got everything we really need in this box so we can start building like stripping the Bits off the old cat, putting them onto the new cat, and then refitting the cat. So yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next bit. Alright, so guys, next up, as you can see, the cat is roughly in position. So what I'm going to do is, first off, thread. the nut on, so I can get my socket back, then I'll be taking the nut off because it's the wrong bloody nut, hence another good reason for the organiser to find that nut wherever that's dropped, be hiding somewhere no doubt. Find that shortly, guys. But yeah, so make sure that's in the right sort of position. Right on there. So I'll get the right nut this time. Right. Not that one instead. Like, like a so. What we're going to be doing is like that, get the back gasket behind it as well. Like that. Thread in, that in, makes another. So we're in a position where it's in the right sort of area now. So we can actually start mocking up the gasket, the heat shields, and everything fitting the exhaust up properly and all that lot so yeah we'll cut back cut out now cut back in in a minute when we've uh, found that nut and then we can carry on yeah, so i'm back found the nut it was underneath the car one thing you will find when you're working if you're doing anything like this with a non-gen car they do fit like absolute garbage uh, i've not i'll be honest i have not found a single one 
that fits well yet. Uh, if you guys have any recommendations on ones that do actually fit well, please drop the drop them in the description. Uh, not the description, sorry, the comment section, because we would be more than happy to use them if they actually do fit properly. Because these ones fit like shit. So yeah, I'm gonna have to mock some up afterwards with regards to heat shielding. Uh, so yeah, well, for the time being. We'll just bolt everything up as it needs to be so we can start making the bracket the mountain bracket at the side of the cap fit because again they fit like shit so that that doesn't fit either so there we are tightening it up by hand to make sure that it all goes in properly like so Thank you. And so, so that as the far bolts there, fitted up. Next up, we will go and grab the new side bolts. With brand new spring. And down there, as you can, you can possibly just see there, is the new Kern gasket. So I'll have to squeeze that, <coughs> shuffle that into position. have been done with these because there's somewhat resistance on them. At least they've done one thing right and given you 14 mil. Well, not to even head bolts. <clears throat> right, I'm gonna cut out guys cutting in a minute when I've uh, got these actually started. So then we can uh, save a bit of time. Yeah, so they're both actually started now. So I'm gonna start off by pulling this one up. First. There we go. So that is pulled up and should we seal in nicely. Fingers crossed. Again, I'm enjoying cat, so we're crossing our fingers there, hoping for the best. Uh, so now I'll go have a go with these heat shields, try and get at the very least this one in to avoid any excess heat on the side of the alternator. Uh, we don't want any too too much heat going to there. So yeah, I'll get I'll get that mocked up. Might have to drill some new holes in it and do it that way. Um, but yeah, we'll figure it out, so I'll catch you guys in the next bit. Alright guys, so as you can see, I now have the heat shield on. I uh, had to drill the holes out to 13mm and use a 10mm bolt and washer to actually be able to reattach it. So next up, we're going to be putting in the lambda sensor. So, just thread it down, thread it down, thread it down, so it gets to the point where it's got the resistance. Then get your 22mm spanner, nip, nip, there we go, that's tightened up there, so then you'll need your 10mm bolt, thread into the hole, like so. Always throw it in by hand first. Make sure you also plug in like that. So then at least it's going to be 
Well, that's one thing you always definitely need to remember, plugging it in, because otherwise you're not going to get any readings. So you can start indicating that there's a fault. And then... Make sure that bolt is tightened down. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, to a degree. I'm just working up here, tightening the bolt down. That is the catalytic converter changed. Uh, so, and then the re refit procedure of the bumper is exactly the same as the removal. So, I'm not going to actually bore you and show you the full thing. I'll probably just stick you towards the side somewhere over there and time lapse the full thing just so you can see it, like, it quickly going back on. So, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next bit. Alright guys, so as you can see, the car's all back together, um, just struck it up, no lights on the dash, uh, everything's refitted as it needed to be, uh, only one minor injury on there, so all in all a successful job I would have said. Uh, what we're going to do next is we'll take it for a bit of a run, take it around block a couple of times, make sure everything's like as it should be, there's no issues, no exhaust blowers, all that sort of thing, and uh, yeah give this one back to uh, the owner and uh, I think that's a uh, job well done on that one. If uh, you require any more information please feel free to drop it in the comment section, uh, we'll be as helpful as we can, it's just a bit, a bit of a walk through on how to do it, uh, so yeah we'll be we'll try and help you out best we can, uh, other than that just drop us a like, hit that subscribe button, make sure you follow us for future content, plenty more videos planned in the future, so yeah, um, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.